Hey everyone, what is up and welcome back to the channel. I'm Heather. I'm Casey. And today we are in Austria at Admont Abbey, which is a monastery that is famous, but it's kind of known, I think, more recently for having a very lavish library inside. So we're interested in kind of learning some about the history, vlogging it if we can for you all. So we're starting the vlog, so hopefully it works out. Um, and yeah, just really excited to see this. It looks incredible um, from what we have seen. And what did you look up about the history a little bit? Uh, well, it was built in 1776. Completed. Uh, when it was completed, yeah. So yeah, we aren't really sure when the building started because we were sort of like looking up on Wikipedia and it said like 1074. Yeah, it's a 1074 and then completed 1776, so I think that was a typo. It's probably 1774. Is it possible <laughs> that it took that long to complete? Let us know down in the comments. We might even hear something on a tour if that's a thing. Um, but I wouldn't say it's out of the question. I just think that's very unexpected if that's the case. Yeah. So um, we can't wait to get inside, see what everything is like. Um, if you're new to the channel, we do a lot of content on life in Germany because we're currently living in Germany, but we are in Austria today. Um, and we do a lot of content too about travel in general and theme parks because we enjoy the European theme parks. So if you like that type of content, definitely consider subscribing and coming along for the journey and always give this video a thumbs up because it really helps out. So let's head inside and check out Admont Abbey. This is where we're headed, the Welt Kloster, Kloster Bibliothek or the world's largest monas, monastic, monastic library. Is that the right pronunciation for that? So we're assuming like monastery. Um, and then there's a whole lot of historical artifacts and different things it looks like as well. So we should have a really fun time checking this out. All right, so just to share a little bit of history, we learned about the Abbey here, which hopefully we're getting everything correct. It was in fact founded all the way back in 1074, which is crazy, by Archbishop Gebhard of Salzburg and settled by monks from St. Peter's Abbey in Salzburg. Now throughout its history, the Abbey had been used as a convent for the education of girls of noble families, a scriptorium, and then the monastery really flourished during the Middle Ages, but then declined during the wars against the Turks and the Reformation and came back into its own later historically. At one point there was even a fire that burned down everything but the library, so the present church you're seeing was designed by architect Wilhelm Bucher in 1865. Alright, well we kind of just stumbled into the actual cathedral here, the Admont. Uh, I guess it's actually the Admont Abbey. Uh, yeah, the I'm thinking so. The library is just attached to it. We haven't found a tour or anything yet, so our lack of information is going strong at the moment yeah um <clears throat> but incredible the all the churches and cathedrals here um, beautiful so far have just been amazing it reminds us architecturally a little bit of the um cologne cathedral yeah the inside the, the tones and the, tones the way the... the bricks are laid and stuff just very reminiscent of that yeah it was absolutely beautiful i you know knew about the library more so than the church so i hadn't actually seen pictures or anything of the church so i just didn't know to expect it to be so grand it's a very beautiful beautiful church obviously we didn't talk inside we just try to be respectful and um, kind of walk through but hopefully you enjoyed seeing that and now we're gonna go on and figure out what other things we can get into here I think there's like I said sort of a museum with some artifacts and the library so we're gonna see um, if we can find someone that help can help us uh, figure out how to get to all of those things so So at this point, we have entered the facility, which is basically a big museum. It's very quiet, so we figured we'd be doing a lot of voicing over as to not disturb anybody enjoying the museum and the library. But you kind of walk through a multi-level building with a series of hallways. And it was so funny because as you're walking through, you know, you, you know there's this grand library there, but you kind of stumble upon really an inconspicuous door. I mean, you can tell it's different from the rest, but still very subtle and then you open it up it's completely closed off and you basically reveal the library as you walk in it's quite an awe-inspiring moment to open that door and then be presented with this library i mean i had seen photos i love to read i love libraries and always have but i truly could not believe what i was seeing i mean as beautiful as i'm sure this looks in a video 
to the naked eye, it's just, it's just like I said, you can't believe what you're looking at. It is absolutely beautiful. And the library is actually the largest monastery library in the world. And I know we'll talk about it later in this video, but it is actually still being used by the monks, which was something I was curious about. I was also really surprised at how quiet and peaceful the library is. I thought possibly it was something that was going to have, you know, just tons and tons of tourists inside and we were pleasantly surprised that it was really quiet and peaceful and I mean, I just couldn't get over the beauty of the entire thing. Now, after spending considerable time in that beautiful library, we did head to some of the other museums, like this was one of the art museums on the upper floor, beautiful tapestries and just historical artifacts from the monastery's history. I mean, look at this, this is absolutely unbelievable what they house in a lot of these museums. We didn't go to every museum, but we did pick a few. So this was the first one we went to, again, looking at a lot of the beautiful art pieces and sculpted pieces. And then we headed over to the Natural History Museum very briefly because uh, I'm such an animal lover and I don't know I, I got a little bit of the heebie-jeebies looking at uh, things like this. There was a section here of apples and pears made out of wax that some man that there was a history where he actually like made all of these out of wax which was really uh, different. I really just wanted to kind of get away from the animals, so the next museum we went to was the Gothic Museum on the bottom floor, which actually ended up being our favorite. We were in here for a fair amount of time, and as I've mentioned before, in the States, it's not that we don't have access to historical pieces, but definitely nowhere near the access um, or availability that you see in Europe. So this is one of our favorite things to do, is just explore all these historical pieces that we would have a much harder time getting to uh, elsewhere. So this was a really, really cool exhibit that I highly recommend if you head to the Abbey because it really was our favorite. Once we finished up here, we did head briefly through their gift shop, which had a lot of cool pieces as well. There was an entire wine section, there was some jewelry, there were some things related to the actual Abbey itself. Um, so definitely worth your time and stopping through here also. The grounds outside too are absolutely beautiful and it's a great place to just go for a walk, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy the day. All right, so we just finished up inside the museum and library and I thought it was incredible, both both things, the, the museum and the library. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to look at. Um, I didn't realize it was more than just the library too. There's all kinds of museums and exhibits in there uh, that you get access to when you buy just, um, you know, one ticket. Yeah, lots so. and lots, probably at least like eight different walkthroughs, maybe. I didn't count, but it was at least like eight, yeah, maybe there's ten. Yeah, the, uh, the Gothic Museum, Natural Museum. Art, um, and history, right? Fine art, fine art yeah. contemporary art. So all kinds all of stuff kinds to look of at. All kinds of great artifacts. Yeah. It was very interesting too. And for people that are English speakers, almost everything had English translations on the little marquees by each piece and also there is an audio option if you choose to take it which we didn't do today because we're kind of a little short on time but there was plenty we read through about all of the pieces we saw yeah i thought the library was everything and more than i even expected it was so stunningly beautiful and there was a really nice um lady who works um, in the library that told us that it is still used by monks um, that I guess I would assume are part of this, this monastery. Yeah, so there's 23 of them that still live here and actually use the library. Yeah, I was asking her about, there were lots of bookcases and I thought, you know, is that just aesthetic or is it actually functional? But I guess it is actually a functioning library and you could see there were plaques kind of all through the tops of those bookshelves that listed what the different topics were. Yeah. for the literature so really really beautiful and I had just as much fun walking through the museums as the library um, just because the artifacts are so ancient and again we just don't have a lot of that kind of stuff back in the states very fascinating and I would definitely come here again it's really beautiful the grounds are also beautiful here yeah so we're gonna see if we can find some lunch and then head on to round two of our adventure today and uh, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sure there's a lot of voicing over throughout this video because you do have to kind of be quiet in these rooms. Yeah, it's kind of hard to talk as you're walking through everything. So. Definitely, but we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.